Welcome to Right Now Workshop Podcast. I'm your host, Kitty Buholtz, and this is episode 27, Hope Saved My Life, an encouraging words episode coming to you on Sunday, February 18th, 2018. Now, as you know, it's not actually Sunday as I'm recording this, but by the time you're listening, of course, it will be Sunday or later, and on Sunday, I will be in Malmo, Sweden. Terribly excited, never been to Europe, just cannot contain myself with how crazy excited I am. And uh, I have actually have been to two countries because you have to fly in to Copenhagen, Denmark, and then take the train across to Malmo, Sweden. So John and I are going to experience new places and new things and new foods and new languages. And I am crazy, crazy excited. I cannot wait. Now, aside from the just general excitement of going to a new place and meeting new people and eating new food, I mention food a lot. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Okay. I like food. I am determined not to be apologetic about liking food, but I will keep exercising to work it off. (laughs) Okay. Total rabbit trail. So I'm super duper excited. I can't wait. I just have so much in my head. Sometimes I barely can sleep. I dream about things that I think that might happen and um, yeah, I, I'm not getting as much work done this week because, or, or what will have been last week by the time you hear this, because, you know, I have to, I have to go buy Swedish Kronas, uh, you know, the money that I use over there and I have to get a travel pillow for the airplane and yeah, there's just so many, th- I have to pack, I have to do laundry so I can pack. <laughs> Anyway, this whole whole trip has got lots of fun things in it, but probably the biggest thing that comes to mind when I think of this trip is hope and how big a part that that is playing in our lives right now. And it made me think about how about a year and a half ago, we were really feeling absolutely completely without hope. And I don't think that John and I have ever been quite that low, where we literally just were trying to wake up in the morning and get through the day and and fall into bed at night and just had no hope left that the future could possibly hold anything good ever again. It was hard. It's a hard place to be. It's a kind of horrible place to be. And also hope makes me think about who I am as a writer. You know, you can probably tell by now that I'm a Christian and um, the most favorite part for me about the Encouraging Words episodes is that I feel freedom to share with you the things that give me hope and strength and courage and joy or, you know, things that get me through hard times and that sort of thing. And a lot of that stuff comes from the Bible. And yes, I do have a few Bible verses that I wanted to share with you because I think that as a writer, one of the most important things that we can do is help other people find hope. I mean, when was the last time that you just felt really down, you know, maybe about work or about your whole life or something going on with your kids or friendship or relationship, and you were just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get through this. I don't know how to move past this. And you read something. You know, for for people like me, it's probably a novel. I read more novels than probably anything else, though I do read a ton of nonfiction. But a lot of it, I would say, is predominantly about writing and business. Um, But then you read something or you watch a movie or a, a great episode of a TV show and you feel like maybe your hope has been renewed again. And thank goodness, because you really, really, really needed it. Anyway, so... um. So all of these things kind of tumbling through my mind together. And um, remember that thing I said about how much I love food? Yeah. So I got up this morning and, uh, and exercised on the stationary bike. Another little aside, if you exercise on the stationary bike, you can turn on Netflix and keep yourself going longer because it gives you permission to watch a TV show or a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so I got an hour in instead of I think I was bored after six minutes. I looked at the little clock on the on the bike and I was like, wow, it's been six minutes and I'm already bored. Thank goodness I've got something to watch on Netflix. Well, there's a movie on Netflix, at least the version of Netflix that's in the U.S. You know, it changes depending on where you are in the world, which I did not realize until I moved out of the U.S. for a little while. There's a movie called Unconditional and it's starring Lynn Collins of X-Men's Origins Wolverine movie fame. She plays his girlfriend. 
And the gorgeous Michael Ely. Michael, anytime you ever want to be on my show, I will let you talk about just about anything you want because you just seem like the nicest person. Don't you have a list? Another little aside? Sorry, I haven't even had any sugar, but I have all these little asides in my head. It's because I'm so pumped up about this trip going to Europe for the first time ever. Should I edit this out or do you just want to hear me act by act? the way I really am. I'm going to leave it in. But tell me if you're like, yeah, Kitty, you really should edit yourself more. Anyway, Michael Ely, he just, he's on my list of people I would love to have lunch with because he just seems genuinely super duper nice. He um, is, you might know him from Barbershop. You'd know him from a lot of things, but Barbershop and um, the TV series Almost Human. Love that series. Of course, if John and I really love a great TV show, it's going to get canceled. So I think it only has one season, but you should try to find it because it's really good if you like sci-fi uh, sci fi movies or TV. This is a TV show. I'm really feeling more and more like I should edit, but no, I'm determined to be myself. <laughs> anyway, so this movie, Unconditional, is a fantastic movie about this woman whose husband is murdered and the police can't find anything. They can't find a killer. And it's just, she's just going to have to live with this unsolved murder and she can't. And she takes matters into her own hands. And as we all know, when we watch movies or read books, it's pretty much always a bad idea. Um, but sometimes the hard, difficult, bad choice things that we do in life lead us to some place that we really needed to be, which interestingly is sort of a paraphrase of a line that that is actually in the movie. Um, Anyway, so of course the movie ends with things being better. Um, she, She gains enough hope to go on living and That is what the movie, you know, is kind of about, is that she lost hope and then she was able to find it again. And when she didn't have hope, her life just wasn't worth living. I don't want to spoil anything, but you should go see this movie. Um, But when she found hope again, then it's like the world just sort of opened up again for her. And I'm sure that you have had experiences like this or times in your life when you felt this way. You know, I, I have certainly. And of course, the movie ends as so often happens with a great movie with great music over the ending credits. And there's a song called Hope Saved My Life performed by Veronica Petrucci. I apologize, Veronica, that may not be the way that you say your last name, and Brian Courtney Wilson. And I love this song so much. It's just very upbeat and up-tempo, and and the lyrics, of course, are very positive and encouraging and just reinforce life. And so I bought this song, and it's on my iPhone. And whenever I have to set an alarm to wake up in the morning, like I did this morning, so that I could exercise off whatever I plan to eat today, which actually turned out to be chocolate chip blueberry muffins, which were awesome. (laughs) Um, The song is just so up-tempo, and I use it for uh, the music that my phone's alarm wakes me up to. So uh, sometimes I use something slower when I'm like, I know I need to wake up, but I don't really want to have to wake up fast on a certain morning. Um, But this song, I love that just all this energy and vibrancy and and the lyrics, you know, it's wonderful. So I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes. Remember, show notes are always at podcast.rightnowworkshop.com. And then just go to episodes and find the episode you're looking for, which today's is episode 27. And I'm going to put a link to um, to this piece of music and to the movie too, because they're just wonderful. But again, all of these things, you know, swirling around in my mind as I'm kind of going crazy, getting ready for this fabulous trip that I have so much hope for. And I'm trying not to think about, you know, anything that might go bad. You know, the the super flu has been going all over the world and I'm just trying not to be around anybody. I'm taking all kinds of airborne. I'm exercising. You know, I'm trying to make sure that um, that all the hope I have in this trip is not... Um, taken apart by things that may or may not be uh, within my control anyway. And all these things, again, they swirl back around to my life as a writer, your life as a writer. You know, all the things that we hope for and that we want, um, the things that we work for, and we don't know whether or not they're going to to work out. You know, somebody uh, coined the phrase hope marketing to describe 
doing some marketing and then just hoping it works and not having any idea whether or not it was the right kind of marketing to do for your business or your product. You know, are Facebook ads good for your book? Are they good for my book? Are, are Amazon ads the thing to do? Maybe we should have a bigger newsletter. Um, and to not do any research and to not do testing and, and trying to figure out what works best for you and your audience, but just blindly following some advice that somebody else gave you. Some people call that hope marketing. You just hope it works. And that's not really the kind of hope that we want to have. We want our hope to be based in something. We need to find some place where, where we can find you know, strength as well and, and courage um, because I think that strength and courage and joy and hope are all kind of mixed up together. So again, some of my favorite places where I find um, hope and, and words to give me more hope and to hang on to hope. Um, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in Isaiah, um, near the end, it says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. I love that no matter how much I don't understand what's going on in my head or in my life, God understands me and he loves me anyway, which is just really, that, that gives me a lot of hope as well. And then it keeps on going. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Hope in the Lord and get more strength. I love it. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And isn't that what we need so often as writers and as human beings? We just need to be able to get up in the morning and not have even the, just the getting up be a huge chore. Um, and, you know, there's something about joy, which is another thing that I've talked about in the Encouraging Words episodes, um, that just joy gives you strength and hope gives you strength. And that's why I think hope is so important. Um, sometimes you get hope from places that you don't necessarily want them. Like in Romans 5, when it talks about suffering, we re also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the, ho by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. My husband likes to say that he doesn't want things to go wrong in his life. He's got enough character, thank you very much. <laughs> but if um, suffering produces perseverance and perseverance produces character, and then it's within your character that you gain more hope, that's, that's a pretty interesting thought. I like that thought. And it just kind of makes me wonder, um, you know, how much more hope could we have in our lives if we were looking into our character a little bit more and trying to figure out who am I? What do I really think? What do I really believe? And therefore, you know, where can I put my hope? Just a few pages later, there's another line about hope, which I've always found really interesting. It says, for in this hope, and that's the hope of um, being able to live with God forever, for in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we wait, if, if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. And then that just kind of makes me stop and think, okay, you're right. I mean, I don't hope that I have a place to live today. I do have a place to live today. I don't hope that I'll have food to eat today because I already do. But if I didn't have these things, then I would hope that I would. Or, um, you know, I do hope that my books get better and better. And as I work on them, I, you know, continue to hope that um, what I don't yet see comes to pass and that my books will get better. And then here's the other thing is that what are we doing this writing for? I really believe um, that we have, if not a duty, then kind of a, a moral obligation, but not that comes out of something negative, but out of something positive. Like we have a, a we have these gifts. Again, you know, I just, uh, sometimes I get so um, passionate about things and I don't know the words. And, and again, I just want to stop and edit myself, but I don't want to edit because this is important. 
We have been given gifts that have to do with communicating and communicating and writing, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, whether we're helping people with a specific problem or entertaining them and giving them a little bit of a, a break from uh, all the rest of the work of life. But whatever we're doing in the world, like what is that creating? So there's a verse in uh, 2 Corinthians 9 that says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. And again, I always think about that in relation to not just, you know, my life as I am in relationships with other people, but also in my work life as a writer. What am I sowing into the world? What's it going to grow to become? Am I putting good things out into the world or am I making the world just a little bit worse by, by what I call entertainment? Um, I worked at a company once that after... I think it was just six or eight months. I was like, I can't work here anymore. I mean, we create things that people like to watch, but these are not making people better. They're making people worse. They're making people have lower standards and lower expectations of themselves and other people. And I just couldn't do it anymore. And I kind of felt bad because... I didn't want it to look like I was being judgmental, but we have a very short life and I don't want to waste it and I don't want to make the world a worse place. So um, I guess I'm just wondering to myself and for you, what are we sowing and are we sowing hope? Are we making people feel like life is going to be better than it was or that um, no matter what is happening, they'll be able to get through it? Um, are we writing romance where love wins and love conquers all and there's redemption in the end? Are we writing science fiction where the power of the human spirit can conquer whatever the challenge is? You know, there's so many stuff, uh, so many TV shows and movies with aliens invading and, and human beings fighting back. And, you know, depending on the episode or the movie, we are winning just barely or maybe it looks like we're losing, but you know that in the end we're going to win because the movies don't end with the earth exploding. Even the um, Armageddon type movies where, you know, a uh, comet is plunging towards the earth and it'll totally destroy the earth if we don't find some way to move the comet out of that um, trajectory. <laughs> but somehow the earth never ends up getting destroyed in our movies. So obviously we do have hope in lots of different ways. Um, crime and thrillers and supernatural books and movies and TV shows, they're about good defeating evil and that good will defeat evil. Sometimes not always um, in our lifetime or 100%, like something bad will happen, but then good will, you know, come back up and kick evil in the butt. And then in my superhero books, like I even created t-shirts that say, you have more power than you realize. And it's kind of playing on that whole idea of superpowers. And what is a superpower? Like just because you can stop a bullet with your skin, does that make you a good person? Is love a superpower or hope a superpower? I think that it could be. <laughs> and then, of course, um, the tagline of the Right Now Workshop in this podcast is write a book, change the world. And you know that I believe that we can do that. I absolutely believe it. Now, I think that we can change the world to make it a better place or to make it a worse place. And it's up to us to decide how much thought we want to put into it. But I'm encouraging you right now to put some thought into it. Give some thought to what you're putting out there and ask yourself, is this helping someone to feel like they've been understood? Is this helping anyone to go, oh, me too. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Is it helping somebody learn to do something that they don't know how to do? You know, that's a great thing. What are you writing about? What are you giving people hope for? Um, if you're writing a textbook, are you making it, are, are you writing it in such a way where people are genuinely going to be able to understand and not just be impressed by how smart you are but still not understand because you want to give people hope that they can learn to do some new thing that they need to learn if you're writing books like that. Um, personally as well as in your writing having hope and then letting that show out in the world and helping other people to have hope I think these are really really important ideas and I really hope that you'll take some time to think about it this week. Now I am not in Sweden, 
But at the time you're listening to this, I am in Sweden, so we've got a whole time travel adventure going on here as well. I hope that you have a fabulous week. I expect that I am probably going to be having a fabulous week right now as you listen to me, or later. Later you can find out, uh, you know, so what did happen on your trip to Sweden, Kitty, because I just listened to you six months later. (laughs) Well, that's all I've got for you today. I hope it was not too over the top. (laughs) I hope you aren't too uh, thinking I'm a strange one who won't edit out all the passionate, I don't know how to say this, but I just really, really want to say it bits. Um, Sometimes maybe we just need to be a little bit more transparent and look a little silly maybe in order to help people to see that you're really serious. You're really serious and you're not trying to be judgmental or telling other people you're not doing it right which I think we all do, but, you know, we need to try not to do it as much, but to just really feel like, what am I contributing? What am I sowing? Um, And, you know, in the end, what will you be reaping? It's it's all very exciting, and um, hopefully it is giving you hope. I hope that you have a fabulous day and a fabulous week, and I hope this is a great year for all of us. Uh, I do have a lot of hope in all of these things. All right, you have a good one. I'll talk to you later.